come expecting some good things, to hear some good things, and to write down some good things. Um, I am so excited for what God is uh, doing in this church and is doing in our city and is doing within these families of this amazing body itself, okay? Um, let me pray. Is that okay? If it's not, I'm still going to do it, okay? All right? Uh, let's pray. I pray, Lord Jesus, over each and every one of these people, Father God. I pray, Father God, you strategically place them in this room to hear the words from the song, Father God, to hear the words from our pastor. And, Father God, birth inside of us a movement that will reach not just these four walls, Father God, but reach the outer zones of Dallas itself, Father. So, Father God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. And we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, guys, in this moment, I'm going to have you guys stand up and stretch those hammies, okay? All right? And then I want you guys to walk around and say hello to these five people. Good morning. If you want to find your way back to your seats, don't sit down, though.
say You would be my joy to say You would be my joy to say belongs to you in every fear I lay at your feet God I sing through the night oh God the battle belongs to you and if you are for me and if you are for me who can be against me Fortress, you go before us. 
Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand. Listen that again. Of our God, Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. Jealous for me, like a hurricane, I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree, bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize. How beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. 
how he loves and oh how he loves us so
Thank you, Jesus. This morning, we would like to recognize our graduates. You're looking pretty sharp here, Pastor Johnny. You as well. Look at that. Look at this. Nice. Well, you know, I, was, I got dressed this morning, and as I uh, looked in the mirror, got here to the church, I thought, well, I look like I'm ready to take a vacation. <laughs> so, Pastor Johnny, the rest of the service is yours. Yes. Okay. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, praise God. We would like to recognize our graduates, and uh, this morning we are going to ask, if you are an eighth grade graduate this year, would you please stand? Eighth grade graduates. Oh, keep standing, keep standing. Woo. Okay, so now we're going to do one of those embarrassing things, and it's always because of me, right? Would you please all come together down here? You won't be the only ones, I promise. Don't blame Pastor Johnny, just blame me. Kind of just picture me as a grandpa, right? Grandpas do these silly things, right? We'd love to see you. This is awesome. I am also going to ask uh, if we have any high school graduates in here. I know we do. Where are you, high school graduates? Would you stand? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> high school graduates, would you come down here right by me? Awesome. And also, we are going to ask, do we have any college graduates this year? Here. How about right down here by me? Woo. Yay, yay, yay. What a great looking group of kids, right? And we have gifts for all of you, and again, just wanting to recognize that uh, this is such an important time in your life, and um, we're proud of you guys, and we're excited about what Jesus has not only done through your life to this point, but what God is going to do. How many of you know He's always doing a new thing, right? He is, and His plans for you are good. They are good. So we want to say we appreciate you. We're proud of you. Pastor Johnny is going to pray a prayer over you, and then we'll let you go back. Does that work? So you'll feel better. How about if I have them all? Close your eyes. Audience, close your eyes. See, don't they? See, it already feels better, doesn't it? They're not looking at you. Pastor Johnny, would you lead us in prayer? I pray, Father God, that you give the ultimate blessing to each and every one of these graduates, Father God. I pray, Father God, you open doors that no man, not no devil, cannot open or shut, Father God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, as they go through their journey uh, from college and just entering into high school, Father God, and just leaving high school, Father God, Father God, the whole world is their uh, playground. I pray, Lord Jesus, as they enter in uh, college, as they enter in the workforce, as they enter in high school, Lord Jesus, give them blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And Father God, give them moments to share their faith, to share their love, and Father God, to reach one more person for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So Father God, we just uplift each and every one of these students, Father God. And Father God, we, we know you're in, you're in their, their hands, Father God. And we love you and we thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen and amen and amen. Amen. Would you let our graduates know we appreciate them. You guys can be seated. So now we're going to move into the section where we start showing the baby pictures. <laughs> right, didn't your parents give us baby pictures you're going to show? <laughs> no, not at all. So it is a great day, great day to be alive. And uh, again, just want to appreciate, uh, just appreciate all those that helped out yesterday. What an event we had, right? <laughs> Wow, the flea market, what a great success. All kinds of people, and so many of you worked so hard. How many of you here helped in some fashion or in some way? That is awesome. Thank you so much, and again, just for all of your, your hard, hard work. And boy, the weather cooperated, and things just filled up even at the last moment. And uh, again, it was just a blessing to see everybody here. It's kind of fun to see that whole parking lot filled up, isn't it? People parking on the streets. Yeah, we'll pray that that uh, becomes a Sunday reality, right, soon? Wouldn't that be awesome? Just again, testifying of people who have come 
to Christ. God is so good. Um, there are, again, some other things you just want to remember going through uh, our announcements this afternoon following this morning service. Uh, the um, junior hires are going to be meeting for pizza and ice cream. Uh, it's junior hires, and then those that are coming up from grade school into middle school, um, you're going to be staying afterwards and kind of get to know your Christ Miss Crystal is going to be there, as well as Pastor Johnny and other youth staff, and just get you all introduced. And uh, as we begin to make those transitions from uh, one age category to another age category, praise the Lord. So uh, that is after service, and I believe Johnny is going to be in room 301, which is right over here. Is that correct? Okay, and I think I may just have to find myself in that direction. Prime timers, please don't miss. Please don't miss um, the uh, coming this week, Tuesday. Prime timer, sombreros and tacos. We're going to have a good time together, and uh, we're going to play some games. We're going to fellowship. Uh, going to have good food, and uh, so don't miss that. That'll be down in the activity center. And, uh, and it should just be a great time in the Lord. Please sign up out in the lobby. Again, it'll just help us to know as far as how much food to have prepared. Um, and we're appreciative of that. Next Sunday is a no-host lunch. I know it's holiday weekend, but there will be people here. Uh, if you would like to uh, join us at Chins, the church is going to Chins for lunch. And so uh, just meet us there after church and be a good time to just develop some friendships and connections with other people. And as you leave this morning, another thing I'd encourage you in, uh, we are going to be spending 30 days in prayer beginning June 5th, carried through July 4th, just praying for our nation, a different focused prayer uh, each day. And those will be available to you as you leave today. Uh, they will be passed out to you at the door and uh, how many of you know we should be praying for our nation? Amen. 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 Praying for God to bless our, bless our nation. Again, to rise up, to heal, and to send us forth the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I thought I saw somebody strange walking around here just a minute ago. I sure hope, Henrietta, that this is the place. What? What, it's a nice big room. Yes, it is. Maybe it's a gymnasium. <laughs> may, may, maybe it's a city hall, even. Well, sir, 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 Ho! What, what, what is this place here? Well, this is a church. Well, then they'll come to the right place. Well, I thought I saw something lurking in the background. Well, I need to find out. Where's your kitchen? Send me to the kitchen. That way? Kitchen's back that way. Let's go. You know what? I've got myself a whole truckload of chicken out there, and I've got to find me a kitchen so I can make my famous original recipe and extra crispy chicken. Now, what, Henrietta? This way? Okay, let's go. Let's see if we can find Some that Some of you place. ushers may want to help this let's gentleman. Let's see if we I'm can not, go. Now, I'm not sure I've got to turn here and turn this way. Oh, this must be it here. <laughs> no. This can't be the kitchen. It's too small. Why, this is a matchbox sized chicken. Kitchen. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have an RV kitchen bigger than this one. Maybe, maybe, maybe around here somewhere there's got to be another kitchen. Maybe this is just an auxiliary kitchen. Let me see. Let's open this door. What? What a mess! Look at these hills of dirt and tunnels. This, I think this room has gophers. Well, well, Henrietta, we need to go back to that gentleman up there. We've got to talk to him about this. Sir, oh, sir. <laughs> yes. We have got a big problem here. You know, I'm told that a lot. You know what? <laughs> this kitchen, this church here is about 30 hens shy of an adequate kitchen. 30 hens? There are about 30, high, 30 of them. Is 30 hens high or shy? Yes. Shy. And let me also tell you something else. Come here, come here. Okay. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but you've got gophers in this building. <laughs> we don't have gophers in this building, They're, although it looks like it. I should say so. We have a new kitchen that's under construction. Oh, 
Yahoo. So you are going to get a much better kitchen. We are going to be built. We are going to oh, have a bigger good. kitchen, a oh. better kitchen. Well, I got to tell you, you've got a lot more work to get done. We do have a lot of work to get done. But we're hoping, the plan is that hopefully we'll finish in August. August? The month of August. That is coming up awfully soon. And what? I know. My chickens can't wait that long. <laughs> is there anything I can do to help? Oh, let's see. Well, there are several things that you could do to help. Tell me. Well, first of all, we've got, we're going to need some paint. Well, first we need some sheetrock work, eventually. We're going to need some people to help with painting. Mm -hmm. Looking for volunteers for that. We're also going to need some people to help us like with cleanup and things of that nature in the kitchen. So, there's, so you could help volunteer for that. Oh, glad and then something else you could do. Tell me. Tell me more. Well, we're raising funds. How much do you need? We need $50,000 to complete this project. Hmm. $50,000. $50, you know, when my business is up and running, when I'm selling my Colonel Sanders fried chicken, or maybe my Connecticut fried chicken, nah, that doesn't sound right. Maybe I'd be able to, get, to chip in too. And tell me, maybe these people out here who've been staring at us Maybe they could ask the good Lord above for his help. And maybe they can get a donation from them also. That would be awesome. They could also help volunteer with That's some of correct. those projects. But you, what? You're right. Look at the time. I've got to get those chickens taken care of. I've got to get them in. But maybe I can find a kitchen on down the street somewhere. Maybe they've got one of those. Maybe they've got one of those fancy chicken washing machines. Where they throw the chicken in, shut the door, push the button, and whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. nothing better than a good plate of Kentucky Fried Chicken for your soul. Well, nice seeing you. Yep, he was a nice man. Yeah. Oh, oh thank God. you, Colonel. Anytime, anytime. Hopefully we'll be ready for you next time. <laughs> well, how many people can say they have Colonel Sanders visit him on a Sunday morning in church? Got to start somewhere. <laughs> you probably noticed as you walked in this morning out there in the lobby, you'll notice the, the ovens that are sitting out there. And again, we are wanting to move forward on this project. And again, so you can help in many different ways. I would encourage you, we're going to pray in just a moment, but would you pray personally? You know, I really believe, I really believe that God can provide for our need. You know, when we started in this process, it was, a, it was an interesting time. As a board, we were trying to figure out how much funds we should raise for this project. And it was very difficult because we had to walk through certain steps before we could actually get that firm number. And the first one was getting the plans drawn up, meeting with the architect and doing all of those things. So as we walked through that process, we weren't, until we had the plans from the architect, we couldn't get the bids for the appliances. And then our first bid that came back for the appliances, not any of the construction work, was like $130,000. And we were like, whoo, that's just the equipment. Well, we got some people involved who have been helping us and searching out different things. And we have got that number down to around 50000 for our equipment, which is really wonderful. And one of the neat miracles the Lord worked for us was the ovens that you see out there in the lobby. We got those ovens for $3,056 less than their value, uh, which was incredible. And God, so God's just working things, but would you keep praying with us? And would you just pray about what God would have you to do, what you could do as we try to reach this goal here in the next three months? It would be awesome. And uh, I know God will lead us, and, uh, and God will make a way for us. But it's exciting. You know, I was thinking about the opportunities. Not only will it enhance uh, the times where we come together as a whole church and enable us to do that more effectively and, and not have to keep ladies here till late washing silverware and everything else, <laughs> but but it enables us uh, to start a lunch program for students in our school. It enables us to be able to be involved in community events on a greater level because of that kitchen. 
I also know that there are outreaches because of that kitchen that we can do within our community. And again, never knowing what the day will hold and the needs round about us, there's always an opportunity to minister to other people. It's kind of fun to envision and it's kind of fun to dream. I know the other day we were talking in conversation about the kitchen, just a few, a few of us, and, and we were talking about, wow, wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be fun to do a big Thanksgiving feast for for those that are in need, for the community. I mean, wow, we could, we could potentially do something like that. It just, it opens so many doors. So, I just want to encourage you again, please pray. And if you are, um, if you would be available to volunteer in some of these areas, it's probably going to be a few weeks down the road, but when it comes to uh, the painting or some of those different things, shoot us an email, write your name down on a card, connection card in front of you, drop it in the box, just tell us I'm good with sheetrock or I'm just willing to be an extra pair of hands or I'm good for cleanup or whatever. Just write that down and stick that in and that will be a great blessing to us. Yay? Yay! That's good. God is good. So I'm trying to remember, trying to remember, is there anything else Anything else other than praying? We're going to pray. Breakfast. Oh, breakfast. Right on schedule. You're going to provide breakfast for me every day? Men's, oh, men's breakfast. Oh, that's what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, men's breakfast coming up. Absolutely. So let's pray. Let's commit this to the Lord in prayer. Father, we, we recognize, Lord, that every good and perfect gift, Lord, comes from above. And God, we are, we're thankful, Lord, for what you're doing. We're thankful for the opportunities that are before us. And Lord, we just continue to pray. Pray, Lord, for more, that God, you would enable us, Lord, to do more as we would reach out, uh, Lord, and bless others in your name. God, with this kitchen project, um, Lord, we look to you. We recognize, Lord, that you are a provider. And Lord, we just call upon you and ask, Lord, to direct us. Uh, direct us, Lord, in, in our decisions. Direct us in the way we should go. Uh, Lord Jesus, and we pray that you just bring this all together, Lord, and glorify your name. We give you thanks and we give you praise for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Would you turn in your Bibles as the kids are dismissed? Would you turn in your Bible to Philippians chapter 3? As you are turning to Philippians chapter 3, you'll notice up here on the podium, oh, they're waving the red flag. <laughs> well, this will be a good time for it. This will be a good time for it. Ushers, would you come forward? Dun, 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 dun. You guys are so patient. So patient with me. I'm really excited about the word. I can't wait to get to it today. I just, God has got a great word for us today. He really does. Father, we're so grateful for all that you've given us. And we're so thankful, God, for what you're doing in and through our church. God, um, I just pray, Lord, that you bless both the gift and the giver. I thank you, Lord, just for multiplying, Lord, helping us as a church, Lord, to do more, Lord, for the kingdom of God here in the city of Dallas, Lord, and around the world. Um, we look to you, and today, Lord, we worship you as we bring the tithe and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. As we worship the Lord in our giving, you will remember that back in the month of April, you remembered my birthday. And uh, again, just so appreciative of all the cards and, and gifts and kind words and things that were expressed, but the uh, church board and school presented me with a grand piano, a Lego grand piano. As you can see, this is now the Lego grand piano. It's on wheels, isn't that nice? Turns around. So I thought it was cool that you would see it. It even has, you know, the little bench that's there. And just like our piano bench, you could raise it up or you could raise it down. I wouldn't suggest sitting on it, though. I don't know that that would really work that well. Uh, a couple of the unique things I just needed to show you that projects can be completed. Um, maybe I'll turn it this way. Um, this piano plays. 
And so I thought it would be good. Jesse's going to like kind of follow along here. Let's see, Jesse, can we get there? There we can. Has a little opening, you open it, and I push the button. And let's see how this works. You ready? How about this one? You see the keys moving up and down? <laughs> no. Isn't that amazing? It sounds like a really cool worship song, doesn't it, right? <laughs> so that's an interesting thing it does. And then it does something else. So I can come and I can push play, and then I could do this. Isn't that amazing? And you know what is really interesting? It just strikes me. I think it's Joshua's 40th birthday today. So I think we should sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Okay, anybody else want to have a song sung? <laughs> Play name that tune. Anyways, thank you. It was very, very kind. We'll get it all closed up and put away. You guys are fun. You guys are fun. Yay. It's exciting. Father, we thank you for our time in the Word today. And um, Lord, we just ask your blessing to rest upon us. Give us ears to hear, Lord, what you desire for us to receive this day. And Lord, I pray that, uh, again, our lives would bring you glory. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that you are good. And we thank you for truth, Lord, that sets us free. And truth that leads us forward, Lord, into all of the wonderful things, Lord, that you have purpose for our lives. So we give you this moment, we give you this time, and we ask for your blessing. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Reading out of the book of Philippians in chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, Paul's words to the church in Philippi, the Scripture reads, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And again, going back to verse 13, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, I'll say it again, one thing I do. I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. You know, a very familiar portion of Scripture to many of us, and in fact, um, a verse of Scripture that sometimes we hear at this time of year when we come to graduation, the focus of, of forgetting and moving ahead. In fact, this was uh, a verse of Scripture that was used at my own graduation and this last week, as I was in prayer before the Lord, I felt like I wasn't even thinking graduation or even that focus, but 
the Lord just dropped in my heart the Scripture. And so as I spent time in prayer before the Lord in direction, I was just like, wow, you know what? This is a timely word, Lord, isn't it? It's a timely word not just for our graduates. It's a timely word for your church. It's a timely word for the day that we're living in. In light of that, the G, that Jesus is coming soon for his bride, it's an important verse of Scripture. In light of, my friends, that we want to finish this race and we want to finish it well, we want to finish it victoriously, it's an important word to you and to me. As we look to this passage of Scripture, we find that in the life and the ministry of Paul, he expresses to us that he is dominated with one supreme objective. And that focus is found in the Scripture there in verse 13 and 14. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal. I press on. You see here that Paul gives to us an illustration. He gives to us, again, an, an athletic picture of a Greek runner and the focus of that as they are running this race, they're, they're putting behind them anything that could be a distraction to them, and they're focusing on the prize, they're focusing on the goal, they're focusing on what they're trying to attain or what they're trying to do. We look here in the Scripture, it, it has a sense as you begin to study this out that there's an abandonment of things, right, in one aspect, and then there's an embrace of other things in another. Again, all with the focus of being able to run and win the race. How many of you know that I, you and I have been called to a walk, a walk of faith? How many of you know as we live this Christian life, it's not always easy, yeah. Right? How many of you know if we're going to be, if we are going to be winners <laughs> or if we're going to be successful or victorious in this Christian walk, it's important that we understand what the Word of God, how the Word of God encourages us. And Paul's words to us today would encourage us and say that there is a time to forget and there is a time to press on or to press forward. Everybody say the word forget. forget. Everybody say the words press on press on, pressing on, pressing forward. You and I should be concerned that as we, and not concerned in the fearful way, but concerned as in our focus way, that we are running this race with patience. We're running it with endurance. We're running it wisely so that you and I finish well and claim the prize. And how many of you know Jesus Christ is the prize? Oh, that should have been a big resounding, shouldn't it have? Jesus Christ is the prize, amen? Yes, amen. What a great God we serve. Great God we serve. When we think about life, and if we take Paul's words into consideration, we know that there are some things it's healthier for us to forget and other things that we need to remember. Now, we can have problems on both sides of that coin, right? There are times where there are things that that hold us or hinder us or trap us or imprison us, and they're things that we need to forget. But there are also other times things that we forget to remember, and that also can lead us astray, right? Paul's talking here in the Scripture, and he talks about forgetting and being very deliberate to press forward, to press forward. To press forward into what? To press forward so that when you and I finish this race and we are before the Lord himself, we will hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant of the Lord. What's the prize that we're looking for? Jesus is the prize, but what is it that affects us, impacts us in this race? The goal is that we finish, that we're winners in this race, that you and I become like he is, that you and I accomplish his work and his will here on this earth, and finally, that you and I will be with Jesus forever and ever. How many think those are worthy goals? Amen. Those are worthy goals. And Paul, again, brings this expression to us. Now, when he talks about forgetting, forgetting is not necessarily in the context. It's not implying that we're obliterating a, a, a thought, Right? Or a focus, and, and, and the forgetting is like forgetting, and, and there's never thought any thought there anymore, or this is totally gone. Because how many of you know in Scripture, it also tells us that we should remember things, right? Right? Tie strings around our fingers, and 
We're supposed to remember the things of the Lord and what he has done for us, what he's provided for us. But there are some things that we forget. It doesn't mean that there never, there's never a thought in our mind concerning those or that we deny things in the past. It doesn't mean that when we think about what God has saved us from that we're supposed to forget that. That's not what it's talking about. When he talks about forgetting in this aspect, it's the focus of you and I constantly and consistently being aware and pursuing, moving forward, and not allowing anything from our past to hinder us in that progression of becoming like Christ and finishing the race well. How many of you know there's a lot of things that we remember that hinder us today? A lot of things that can be before us and even before the church corporately that would hinder us from fulfilling God's will and from finishing the race well. Again, he writes here and he says, there are things that we remember that should be forgotten, things which are behind, things that hinder and that keep us from moving forward. The natural question would be this for you and me, what are those things? What are those things that can hinder us? What are those things that should be forgotten? And very obviously, the first thing that would come to our minds would simply be this, it would be our sin. Anybody ever been bound by your sin? Anybody ever come to Christ and confessed your sin and received forgiveness of sin? How many of you know that when we come to Christ in salvation, we become new creatures in Christ Jesus? Then why is it if we become new creatures in Christ Jesus, and if he has a higher plane and a higher place for you and I to live, why do we keep looking back and allowing things in our past that have been covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, why do we allow those things to hinder us from moving forward in what Christ has purposed or planned for our lives? See, my friends, if you and I have truly confessed, if we truly repented of our sin, renounced our sin, the Scripture tells us it's forgiven, it's forgotten. Right? I think that's good news. Friends, I'm just like you. There are those moments and there are times where for some reason, whether it's the attack of the enemy or even our own selves or even other people, where we allow things of the past that have been put under the blood, we keep allowing those things to be brought back up again as if we're still in that same place. And it hinders us. It causes us to hesitate. It hinders us in our spiritual growth. It hinders us in maturing in Christ. It hinders us in our well-being. It hinders us even in entering into the call of God upon our lives. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's good news. Psalm 103, 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he, has God removed our transgressions from us. Good news. Isaiah 44, 22, I have blotted out your transgressions, the Lord says. Good news. This is the kind of God we serve. Micah 7, 19, he will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sin into the depth of the sea. Hebrews 10, 17, their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. Hallelujah. 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 You and I are a privileged people. But we need to understand that there are times where our past sin, we allow the enemy or sometimes even others to keep us bound, even ourselves. We keep ourselves bound and we say, it's not possible. I can't be this. I can't do this. It's like an unhealthy fixation on what has been. I want you to know the blood of Jesus Christ, Scripture tells us, cleanses us from all sin. Right? Good news. There are people in churches all across, all across the land, Christian people who place their faith in Christ 
but they're not living in freedom. Church, when you and I hold on to past sins that we've repented of, that we've confessed, that we've forsaken, my friends, we need to remember God has forgiven, God has forgotten, God has removed. We don't want those things to hinder our spiritual growth. What about our past failures? Did you know that I, as your pastor, have had many failures? It all started at age, I think, about two. (laughs) When I walked to the neighbor's house and I picked up a cigarette butt and put it in my mouth backwards. The truth is, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? And the truth is, we all make mistakes. We've all failed. We failed in relationships. We failed in decisions that we've made. We failed in other areas of our life. And my friends, we need to be careful. Yes, we want to learn from those things, and we want to grow from those things, but we don't want to be bound by those things. What a shame that one mistake puts somebody on the sidelines in their mind for the rest of their life. Do we believe that there is power in the shed blood of Christ? Do we believe that he has the ability to change a life? My friends, our peace will be destroyed. Our progress will be impeded, talking spiritually again, and our usefulness will become limited when we have an unhealthy fixation on our past failures. It doesn't mean that there aren't moments or times where we, it's not like we're denying what has been. It's the reality of we don't camp there right? If it's been covered by the blood, if we've given it to the Lord, don't camp there. It's unhealthy. It's going to keep you bound and keep you from moving forward, moving forward into all that God has planned for your life and for mine. What about past successes? Now, there's another thought. Past successes If we dwell constantly upon our past successes, it can give place, it can stir up pride. It can cause us, again, to live in a place and miss out what God is doing in the here and the now. Camping in a past success. How many of you know God is a current God? Right? I mean, we look back and we see he always has been, he is, and he evermore shall be. He's relational. He's ever present. God always has been. God is not past himself. And the danger, my friends, even for us in in the church, we could even go into our workplace too, but we make an accomplishment. What happens to the graduate? The graduate who who finishes high school and and accomplishes, again, just a, a great thing, but then they stop. And they never move forward to learn a trade or to go to college or to, they don't move forward. That's it. There are opportunities that are missed. What God has purpose and plan for their life, it's missed because I got straight A's. I was the valedictorian. Praise God. We want to rejoice in those good things. Nothing wrong with that. But we can't camp there because God is always doing a new thing. He's always doing a new thing. And he has a purpose and he has a plan for your life and for mine. My friends... What is the Lord doing presently in and through your life? Is anything hindering you from seeing that, 
from experiencing that. You know, the sad thing, my friends, and we've all seen it and we've heard it in, in various places, but sometimes churches have fallen into that place right, as the corporate body, and we've experienced great successes. We've experienced incredible ministry. I remember I grew up in a church that I really, in, in my younger years, I would say it was a church that looked so much like the book of Acts. We were out in the city, and we were involved in outreach. We were at the Oregon State Fairgrounds and giving altar calls. I mean, there were people that were being saved weekly, But how many know you can't camp there? And I know in my own life over the years, there have been different times and periods where it's kind of like, oh man, that was the day. Boy, wasn't that a great time? That was a truth. And you camp, and, and that becomes your focus, and, and that becomes what you desire and what you want. But you know what? God's doing something new. It won't work to go back. It only works if we align with what God is doing now. What is God doing today? The work of God's Spirit in and through our lives is to be a fresh work in you and in me and in the church. The sad thing, and you know this as well as I do, and we've seen it in our nation when we look at the number of closures of churches, is churches didn't recognize this in time. And all of a sudden, they found themselves, their baskets empty. Recognize that we need the fresh presence and power of the living God in our midst. Past successes. You know what? I could, you could, all of us could sit and we could talk to one another and talk about all of our past successes. But you know what? I want to encourage you. God wants to bring success to you today. He wants to work miracles and bring victory. He wants to show his power in, in and through your life today. And in and through his church. We must forget. Doesn't mean that we don't appreciate the past. It doesn't mean we're not building on the past. We need to do that too. There are great things we can look at the path, but we can't camp there. What do we need to do? We move forward. Forget and move forward. Past pleasures. Past pleasures. You know, it's interesting. There is no better illustration <laughs> than the Hebrews in the Old Testament. Right? Israel, they're, they're, they've been in bondage to the Egyptians. And God raises up a deliverer and he delivers them out of Egypt and is going to bring them to this land of promise. And do you remember the scriptures coming out of Numbers chapter 11? Here we go. Yeah, I mean, you remember they cried out a lot. There was, there was a lot of complaining that went on, right? Things. They're always looking back. Past pleasures. We remember the fish we ate freely in Egypt. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Listen, chapter 21, same story again. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Did, there's no food or water. Our soul loathes this worthless bread. Think about it. What were they doing? They were being hindered by the past. They weren't looking forward and, and where are we going? What is God doing? What does he desire for us? They were looking bad. And the sad thing about this, my friends, when we become fixated, unhealthy fixation on the pleasures of the past, when we have that unhealthy fixation... It will keep us from seeing the miracle in the present. Come on, church. Think about it. God was miraculously, supernaturally providing manna for them. 
And yet they're looking back and missing out on the glory of this incredible provision that's before them. Could that be true of us as believers sometimes? Could that be true of us as a church? We're missing the miracle that God is doing right now in the present because we're fixated on the pleasure or what was desirable, even what was good, but it's in the past. There's nothing wrong with remembering those things. Again, I remind you, Scripture encourages us to count our blessings. Scripture encourages us to remember and to give thanks. But my friends, I want you to know, God is desiring for his church and his people. And Paul brings these words to us, and it is the focus of forget and press on. Press on. Another thing that oftentimes will hinder us in our spiritual growth or hinder us in fulfilling God's purpose is simply this. The need that you and I would have to forget our past hurts. Our past hurts, our unhappy experiences. I could tell you right now, there is a huge group of Christian people who are not in any church, who are not fellowshipping with any believers because they've had an unhappy experience and they have an unhealthy fixation and it's keeping them bound. And it's God's desire that they have fellowship within the body of Christ. It's God's desire to move them forward and for them to become more Christ-like. But they're allowing things, unhappy experiences, they're allowing painful things, the memory of those things, to instead lead them to places of resentment. And it really is doing them more harm than anybody else. Forget and press on. Forget and press on. My friends, all of us, all of us have been let down. All of us have been cheated in some way or been hurt or mis mis misunderstood, been ill-treated. But God's word directs us to forgive just as Christ has forgiven you and me. Believe me, my friends, if we continue to keep dwelling upon it, it will hinder us. It will hinder our spiritual growth and it will hinder us from fulfilling God's intended purpose for our life. What about past blessings? It's kind of similar to some of the other things that we have talked about. But past blessings... There was a statement that I found as I was preparing for this message. I can't remember if it was in one of the commentary books uh, that I was looking at or who it was by, but the, the statement that they said was simply this, yesterday's blessings are insufficient for today. I had to think about that for a moment. You know what scripture came to my mind? His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Did you know that God has a fresh word for you every day? Did you know that God wants to bless you today, not just yesterday? He doesn't want you to have to live off of what was past. He wants to bless you today. He's a God of the present. You say, Pastor Chris, how do you know that? Okay, listen, I love this. I love this, love this. Let's think it's Psalm 103, 2. I love it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That's scripture, right? This is awesome. Then the psalmist continues. Who forgives, heals, redeems, crowns, satisfies, executes righteousness and justice. Or does it read like this? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgave, who healed, who redeemed, who satisfied. Do you see what I'm getting at? 
He's an ever-present God. He is not a God of the past, although he has been in the past, right? It always has been. But he's a God of the present. He walks with you and he talks with you. He desires to interact with you and with me. He desires for you not just to have to rehearse and replay past blessings. He wants us to be able to rejoice and say, they are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Great is your faithfulness. Think about it in the church realm. What a shame. That a church, and I'm not saying us, I'm just talking generalities here, right? But it can apply to us. What a shame when we have to rely on our past blessings when we should be experiencing them every day. Do you know what I'm saying? Do we talk more about what God has done? Or are we talking about what God is doing? He's the same God. He hasn't changed. His will hasn't changed. Present. Isn't that powerful? Oh my goodness, I love this. I feel like I'm eating a really great steak meal right now. I love this. Oh my goodness. Our past blessings. Things we must forget. My friends, we need to forget the sins and the failures of others. You know, I kind of thought that was going to get at least a medium amen. It really causes, you know, it really though causes us to do some introspection, doesn't it? Got to forget. What a sad thing it is when it's easy for the church to remember and recount the mistakes and the failures and the sins of others. You see, we've been forgiven so much by our Heavenly Father, and God gave His only Son to die for our sin. It just almost seems ludicrous that we wouldn't also extend that same love and forgiveness to other people around us. And what a shameful thing for people to be in fellowship together in the body of Christ and for people within the body to feel paralyzed and held and imprisoned by other people's words. How do we describe other people? How do we describe one another? Oh, you got to watch out for that one over there. <laughs> Let me tell you something about... You know, this person failed in this area, so I don't know... I'm not saying we don't walk in wisdom, but is that how we remember people? If Jesus doesn't hold us back, you know what I mean? If, if Jesus doesn't let us be released from our sin, I mean, I mean, He does let us be released from our sin, but you know what I'm saying? If He's not holding us, if His blood covers it all, and we're able to grow and move forward, we got to let people be released to move to their full potential, to become, I'm not saying that we walk in, that we're not wise or, or what we do. Obviously, you don't put somebody into a, a place of leadership, right, who, who needs to walk through a period of maybe proving, right? But, oh, church, there are so many people, so many people in the body of Christ that need to be released. They need to be remembered not by what they have done, God 
God's called us to love one another and to forgive one another. We need to get rid of the shortcomings as far as that being the focus in our mind, not holding people hostage. And you know, sometimes out of our own hurt or pain or discomfort with whatever has taken place, we may have the temptation to say, but, but, I, but I can't. I can't release this individual. I can't release this person. And I want you to know, my friends, it's a lie. You can. Well, Pastor Chris, I can't forgive so-and-so for what they... You know, and you may be here in fellowship with us today, and I want you to know I love you. You may have been offended by another pastor or another church or somebody else in a church, and I want you to know I know it's painful. We've, we've all experienced something of that nature. But you can forgive. And if there is still an unhealthy fixation in your heart and in your mind concerning those people, you need to forgive them. You need to forget and you need to move forward. And if you want some help on how to do that, I'd love to help you. Give me a call. Send me an email. Love to pray with you even here this morning. But there is a way, my friends, that you and I can reverse that process, something that consumes your thoughts and consumes your mind. You want to know what the answer is? To remember something, you have to keep recalling it. You have to keep reviving it, right? If it's something negative that you're dwelling on, so stop reviving it. Stop recalling it. It doesn't mean, so oftentimes we, we get this mixed up thing when we think about forgiving somebody, right? Somebody's injured us, somebody's hurt us. In our minds, it's like, I, I can't forget what was done to me. And forgiveness doesn't mean that you forget it. Like, it's like, like you know what I mean? It's like it didn't happen. It's you and I being renewed with the mind of Christ. You and I being renewed in the word of God and recognizing, huh, I don't have to revive that thought. That's under the blood. I'm walking a new way. I'm pressing forward. Don't let the enemy dupe you too in the focus of just if you have a, a thought that comes every once in a while that just makes you feel defeated or question whether you've forgiven somebody, take a hold of that and surrender that thought to the Lordship of Christ. If you put it under the blood, it's under the blood. Now you just need to walk it out. And how do you do that? You press on. Quit camping there. Press on. Okay. You ready for me to finish up? And I think I am too. <laughs> Last two things I just want to point out to you in this passage of Scripture that are important. It's not just the focus of the things that we leave behind, that we forget. But what are we straining forward to? I said it in the beginning, and I'll say it now, and you'll see it here in the Scripture. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. But I press on. The word perfect here is not just an initial perfecting, but it's a continuing. Do you know what Paul's saying to us? <laughs> Press on. Press on to be more like Jesus. Press on to get closer to Jesus. Press on. Discover what God's gift and plan and purpose is for your life. There's a purpose for us as the body of Christ, but he also has a destiny for each and every one of us. And Paul says, this one thing I know, this one thing I'm going to do, I'm forgetting all the stuff behind, my successes, my blessings, all of the education, all of the hurt, all of the pain, all this stuff, forgetting all this stuff. I don't want to be hindered at all. I'm pressing forward to become like Jesus. I'm pressing forward to win the prize. I want to see him face to face. I'm pressing forward to be more like Jesus. I'm pressing forward to take the gospel all over the world. But church, 
Think about it. A church that's living with pain and hindered by the past of things that God never intended for us. That's why he shed his blood, right? For us to continue to carry those things hinders us and we don't get the job done. We're too busy thinking about the wrong things. And Jesus came that we might have life and life more abundantly. He came that we would rise on eagles' wings. He came that you and I would live on a higher place than the people of this world. Why? (laughs) Church, we are citizens of another land. We are journeying through this life. We're going somewhere. Jesus is coming soon. And God would say to his people, be free. Be free to be who God has called you to be. Quit being hindered by these things. And like my son Paul, press on toward the call, toward the goal. Give yourself completely to me. God wants the church today in America to become whole. He wants a church that's divided to become one. He wants a nation that's divided to become one. He desires, if we are willing, church, God will use us and he will use America once again to take this glorious gospel all over the world with great power, but we've got to let this stuff go. we got to forget a bunch of stuff and get our eyes on Jesus. Get our eyes on his word. Get our eyes on what we're supposed to be about. Do you know, my friends, do you know what God's specific call or purpose is in your life today? What's hindering you from moving into that? There are some of you, my friends, that should be teaching. There are some of you that should be discipling. There's others, others of you that should be leading the choir and worship as we go forth with the word and the good news of God. There are others of I mean, we just go on and on and on. But so many times it's because of these things that we don't take the step forward. As I said before, <laughs> I think about previous pastors that I've sat under people I'd say like significant people who have influenced my life and I think about a lot of the stuff they put up with and I could go back and I could I mean natural things (laughs) even just simple things Maybe where you felt foolish or you said something wrong or you did something. I could come up with every excuse in the book. To say I'm not worthy of that. (laughs) There's no way I could do that. And my question to you would be how big is God? How big is your God? Oh, can I just read one more scripture? (laughs) Romans 8. This is so good. So good. I'm so sorry, but I just am so loving this morning the word of God. Not that I don't love it other days, I just... Okay, I I love this. And you know what? The scripture makes me think of Larry Moore. And just such a precious, precious man. And, um, but I remember talking about the scripture multiple times with him. And it begins, we, the first part, and he would often say this too, we read the first part, but we miss the second part. (laughs) I love it. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who were called according to his purpose. That's all of us, right? 
for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed into the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. It's predestined, my friends. <laughs> God has a purpose for your life and for mine. And it's predestined that we become like Christ. It's good news. It's good news. Would you stand this morning? <laughs> oh, praise God. Worship team, would you come back? I think the song that you closed with, oh, how he loves us, how he loves us so. What an amazing truth. It's the love of God that changes and transforms our life. Church, this morning, I want us to go to prayer. Would you just, would you just bow your heads for a moment? And right now in this moment, if there's anything, as we've been preaching this morning, the Word of God has been coming forth, if there's anything that you sense that God's pointed out by His Spirit that, that is hindering you and pressing on and moving forward, would you right now just confess that before the Lord? Just say, God, that's, that's me. God, that's me. It could be a hurt. It could be a pain. It could be a misunderstanding. It could be a blessing. It could be something that you fix or you focus on that's totally good. But it's just keeping you from moving forward. Father, we come before you today. We thank you, God. The Lord, all of your desire for us is good. We thank you for not only saving us and redeeming us, but we thank you, Lord, that you are changing us to be more like you are. And Lord, even as Paul writes, Lord, we haven't attained it yet, Lord. We're in this process. It's all about, it's your desire that we would grow up spiritually, the church, that we would mature in Christ. God, I pray that over our fellowship. Lord, help us to be released from these things that have held us. Help us once again, Lord, to bring them before the cross, Lord, to, to again just plead the blood of Christ over these things, to turn from them, and to recognize, God, that what you have for us, ahead of us, is so much greater, so much more glorious, that, God, you're not finished. God, forgive us for where we've strayed. Lord, forgive us for living in a place of less versus more. You are our amazing God. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just in a moment, just this moment, just commune with the Lord right where you're at. Just ask him for his help. Surrender your thoughts to the Lordship yeah, of Christ. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, he loves us, Lord. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us, Lord. Oh, how he loves Okay. I'm sorry, but I'm just having a blast up here with the Lord. Okay, God, so God puts this picture in my head. Saul who we know as Paul, on the road to Damascus, right? He's been persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. He encounters Jesus. And you know what the Scripture says? Look it up. It's in, in Acts. You can read this. 
He encounters Jesus, and the very next thing that comes out of his mouth is, what can I do? What am I supposed to do for you? Do you get that, my friends? When you encounter Jesus, when we encounter Jesus, our very nat natural response should be, okay, God, what would you ask of me? What are you wanting to do in me? What are you wanting to do through me? Would you say these words, here I am, Lord. Use me. You are a blessing. Sing the chorus one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Praise God. Can somebody shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Our staff and prayer partners are going to be up here this morning. If you need further prayer ministry, would you come? Let's go with God. Let's turn this world upside down for Jesus. Press on, church. Press on. God is good. Amen.